Now, the whole point of being prepared is to have what you need before you need it. And in the middle of winter, power goes out, no more furnace to keep you warm in the middle of the night. You need to have a couple of backup options. And the way I see it, every single household out there should have at least a couple of the things I'm gonna talk about on this list. Most of them are not expensive and they're just great to have. So I'm gonna go over a few of my favorite options in order of preference. There's no right or wrong here. And this way, if you lose power in the middle of winter and it's freezing outside, you're gonna be able to keep warm if it's for hours, days, even weeks. You're gonna have some options. And there's some great tips and tricks that you wanna keep in mind to really get the most out of these emergency heating options because you're not gonna be cranking out the heat that you would with a furnace. Always, hands down, smaller room, the better. But you wanna make sure that you have proper ventilation with any heating source that has an open flame. And that's because carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide are going to be produced with that open flame. You're gonna be running out of oxygen because that's what the flame needs to survive. And you're gonna be getting these other dangerous gases not good to be having in high quantities. You wanna make sure that you have carbon monoxide detectors, carbon dioxide detectors, clean air coming in, and letting that bad air get out. So my top pick in this list is the wood stove because if you live in an area where you have plenty of trees, down trees, you have a wood stockpile that you can put together ahead of time, wood stove is going to be perfect. And in my book, a home is not complete without a wood stove. Even if you're not using it as your primary source of heat, it is an amazing backup option. This is my top option too, because you can easily cook on it. So you've got heating, you've got cooking, you've got boiling of water all in one setup. Now wood stoves aren't necessarily cheap, especially with this awesome thing called inflation. But if you know how to install these yourself or you want to give it a try, be very careful, please. You'd be able to save quite a bit of money on the labor it would take to install one of these. And you can always get a used one. Just remember that over time, the seals go out. You got to take care of this. There's some maintenance. Obviously, the creosote that builds up in the chimney, all of these things to consider. And same thing with a wood fireplace. Only this is not an option that I would consider, honestly, because I have so many other options I have prepared for. You got to make sure that the creosote and that buildup in your chimney is cleared. But the thing with a wood fireplace is if you've got a standard wood fireplace, you're losing over 80% of heat. I've heard as much as 90% or more. They're just super inefficient. So you could get a wood fireplace insert. Um, that's going to make it a heck of a lot more efficient. But hey, if that's all you got, try to close off as much of that room as possible so you don't have to heat more than you really need to. So I know that not everybody has access to a fireplace or a wood stove. It's just not gonna be realistic, especially if you're in apartments, you're in the city, it's gonna be harder. Those aren't gonna be seen as often. Everybody can afford and to have a few of these laying around. And that is just the basic blanket. You've got your wool blanket, which I love. I know a lot of people have irritation to this. Um, alpaca wool is also another great option very warm, flame resistant. You can actually put out fires with this thing that is water resistant. Just a lot of great characteristics and properties to wool. You've got a sleeping bag or a sleeping bivy, mylar. It's gonna reflect up to 90% of that heat back to you. Make sure that you're not sweating, especially in winter. Um, you can sweat pretty easily in these. You don't wanna be waking up soaking wet because that will freeze, will very likely freeze overnight while you're sleeping. And that can be a serious problem, it could kill you. Got a mini sleeping blanket, one of those emergency Mylar blankets. Great to have, try to get better quality or just get a lot of them, super cheap. You can have one everywhere if you wanted. Then you've got a quality sleeping bag. This is my down sleeping bag. Um, depending on what bag you go with, you know, you can go with synthetic fibers, you can go with down. Down's gonna be super warm. It's also gonna be more expensive. If you're a serious camper, you should probably already have one of these down sleeping bags. I would invest if you plan on using this more than once. And who could leave out the infamous Mr. Heater Buddy Heater? Now, this is a Buddy Heater. This is a little Buddy Heater. This guy I'm sure you've seen all over the internet. Super handy to have around for hunters, emergency situations, you're somebody that works out on your car in the middle of winter, very safe. You've got some sensors, uh, low oxygen, tip over sensors, ultimately great options. And my number one propane option 
and I like propane for a lot of reasons. For this heater, you can use these little propane canisters you can get at Walmart, wherever you pick up groceries. Don't hate on me for shopping at Walmart every now and then. Got the little buddy heater. Um, I got this not too long ago. It's just a little more portable. If you are using a hose with a 20 pound or greater propane tank, you're gonna have to lug that thing around too, by the way, but if you have these little tanks, it's gonna be super easy to use. You also have refillable uh, tanks, these smaller ones, 16 ounce tanks, super handy to have. If you're going through a ton of these, you're able to refill them. I wish I invested in these a long time ago because I have gone through a few of those tanks, unfortunately. You can refill, technically, these 16 ounce tanks, but they are not supposed to be refilled. Uh, I've heard some horror stories from people doing that. So I would just go the reusable tank route. That's just me. Getting back to the hose on this, you can use a hose with a larger tank, but you want to make sure that you use the buddy heater hose, which is not going to have... Um, the fluid and the oils that you're gonna have in most of the hoses out there. You're gonna see a lot of people say, you gotta use a filter, you gotta use a filter. Um, when I spoke to the company, they said, you don't need a filter as long as you use their hoses, which are built, again, without the oils that are gonna build up in the heating element and screw that up. So if you wanna be extra careful, if you think I'm wrong, throw a filter hose on there as well. I'm comfortable with that. The big reason I just love propane heaters is propane will last forever. As long as the seals on the tank are kept in good condition, the tanks aren't left outside, you've got them in some shade. If you're storing the thing right, which they're not too picky, don't put them upside down in storage, don't lean them on their side in storage, you're gonna have propane for as long as you need. So as my primary heating element, heating source, I would use, if not a wood stove, I would have one of these heaters, propane heater. You can get catalytic heaters as well. Something that runs off of propane because the fuel is just so easy to store. Now, one of my backups of my backups is Sterno or biofuel or canned heat. Um, there's another name for it as well. Chafing fuel. You can cook with it. You can heat with it. This is my emergency backup of a backup. The great thing is you can store quite a few of these. Even if you had six of them, you know, a pack of six, you're gonna be pretty well off. These things usually last seven hours. This one is a two and a half, almost 2.25 hour burn time. Emergency situation, you're gonna be able to pop one of these open and get through the toughest part of the night. So once you open these up, this flame gets very, very hot. So you gotta be careful with kids, you gotta be careful with pets because you're not gonna be able to see this flame in most cases once it starts getting going and the crackling stops. It's gonna be nearly impossible to see. It can be a very dangerous situation. Don't burn your house down. One thing that you can do and I like to do if you're using sterno or candles, put it in a pot, get it out of the way, put it on a cabinet, just make sure that you don't have cats walking around. And again, little kids, make sure the stuff is out of reach. It is helpful, I guess, that they have a heat indicator. So this will change colors for you if it is hot. Just another way to know if it's activated, but the kid's not gonna read that and the cat uh, probably can't see colors. Or is that dogs that are colorblind? So if you're gonna get emergency canned heat, I would go for the seven hour canisters. They're just gonna be bigger. Depending on what your budget is, this is obviously better than nothing, but try to go with more heat if you can. Now the next option I don't actually have, and I've been really kind of kicking the can down the road. I'm just trying to free up time so that I can actually take the time to learn it. And that is a kerosene heater. It's gonna be more maintenance, the fuel lasts two to five years, so not as long as propane, but it's still a decent time frame. I know many people in the comments talk about using their kerosene heaters for their primary source of heat. So it's great, it's tried and true, it's been around for a very long time. Also remember there's gonna be more maintenance with a kerosene heater, and you're gonna have to learn how to store it correctly to make sure that you get the most out of your heater. Now, because I am a power station solar generator junkie, I've got plenty of these guys laying around. This is one of my smaller EcoFlows that I have. I usually use this for camping. I would not be using this for a power outage situation. This is actually really hot right now. Okay, that's weird. Plug in something like a small space heater. These are obviously not going to be the most efficient options. This is 
consuming 200 watts, 250 watts at the moment. So it is going to consume power, not nearly as fast as a larger space heater, but it is still going to drain that battery much faster than you want. A great option that one I would use in a situation, I actually use this for camping if it is just way too cold because I'm one of those crazy people that love to camp in the winter. Very weird, I know. What I do is use a warming blanket or a heating pad. You are able to hook this up. I believe it is 40 watts on the low option. Some folks have claimed that it is a fire hazard. I think there are a lot of fire hazards and you're dealing with emergency fuel and open flame. I would rather stick with this. I would take this over an open flame when we're talking the fire hazard conversation. This would run for a couple hours on this little power station on low mode. It's consuming 45 watts. You've got a larger one of these, you're gonna get a lot longer runtime. Now my second to last heating option in an emergency situation, no power, are candles. And these little tea light candles are really great. There are hundreds, <laughs> hundreds of types of candles. You can make your own using Crisco and you can use these to heat a small room. I'm talking by a couple degrees. You're not gonna be sweating with these things, uh, you don't wanna be anyway. Make sure you have some kind of ventilation. You've got your carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide detectors, just in case, and you're able to use some of these candles to keep temps above freezing. The more candles you use, the more heat output, of course, but again, this is a backup of a backup of a backup option for me. I've got a couple few hundred of these laying around just in case. Again, be careful with the open flame on these. I would put them in something, same situation. Make sure it's on a table in the middle of the table, in a pan, in a pot. Follow those rules and you severely decrease the chance of a house fire and making your situation so much worse. Now my last option is my favorite option because I make videos on these things and that is DIY options tons of different ways to make your own heating. They're not going to be as safe as other options. For example, the uh, propane heater, the buddy heater, but they're more fun and it's cool to know. So I made this heater with isopropyl alcohol and toilet paper. So if you're short on funds or you just wanna have some fun and test things out, do something with the family, you can make some of these DIY options Again, backup of a backup of a backup in my book. All right, folks, those are just a few ways to heat your home if you absolutely need to, emergency methods of heating. Some of these aren't going to make you super comfortable, but they may save your life, like the candles. Others, you get a room small enough and you have a propane heater like the buddy heater, you're gonna be pretty toasty. So this was in order of my preference. Let me know in the comments what your favorite method of heating is and what you would do in a situation where you lost power for a couple days. This just happened last year, it happens almost every year. Every person needs to have at least a sleeping bag, at least a wool blanket. And if you've got smaller kids where they're gonna be trying to get out of those things, have something like a propane heater, be safe, Bring the sensors, the carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide sensors. Make sure you have really fresh airflow, air in and air out. Stay safe, stay practical. I'll catch you on the next one.